Hello my friends. Today we are going to make a lentil mushroom stew in our solar oven, the ghost and fusion. This is a really easy recipe to make with less than 10 ingredients and I think you're gonna love it. The first ingredient is of course lentils. These are just regular green lentils. Just one cup is what we need. And if you'd like, you can also substitute these with French lentils, but green lentils work just fine. You're also going to need some kind of broth. This is a vegan broth. Make sure that whatever broth you get, you get more of a clear broth, not one that has tomato or tomato base to it. Mushrooms, about four to five cups of mushrooms. So today we're gonna to use a combination of Baby Bella and shiitake mushrooms. You'll also need one large shallot and three cloves of garlic. In terms of spices, you'll need some rubbed sage and some thyme. A little bit of salt and pepper and some green onions for garnish. Let's get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is take my mushrooms and make sure that they are clean and rinsed. These shiitake mushrooms already came pre-sliced and pre-washed, so I don't have to do much for them. But for the baby bellas, I want to rinse them off really quick, take some of that, you know, clusters of dirt off of them. So when you're washing mushrooms, just take into account that mushrooms absorb water very easily. So you don't wanna leave them for long periods of time, like submerged under water or under running water. So I'm just going to rinse them off very quickly and give them a pat down with a paper towel. And what I'm looking for is about two cups of sliced baby bella mushrooms. Okay, so I have my baby bellas here. And when you're chopping up mushrooms, if the stem looks very hard or is kind of damaged or you cannot get that crust of dirt off of it, you could just cut that portion off. I tend to cut the ends of the stems off normally. Then you're gonna use these, chop up about two cups of your baby bellas and put them directly into the tray. Okay, we got our two cups of baby bellas in there. Now we're gonna put in two heaping cups of our shiitake mushrooms. Two heaping cups. I love shiitake mushrooms. They have such a delicate flavor. Cup number two. So, so far we have two cups each of our baby bellas and our shiitakes. We just wanna make sure that that's distributed there at the bottom. Then we can take our shallot. And what we're gonna do with shallot is just slice it up really thinly and add that as well. And the last thing we need to chop up and add are our three little garlic cloves. So, these just need to be minced up. Usually I cut the end off a garlic clove and then I crush it a little bit. It makes it so much easier to peel. So cut the end off and then crush and peel. All right, and then we take our little garlic bits and dice them up. Once it's nice and diced, just add your garlic to your tray. Now we're gonna add our lentils. So with lentils, you always want to kind of sort them and rinse them first because you never know what kind of debris or dirt might be on your lentils. And sometimes rocks can actually get mixed up in your lentils too. You don't wanna like accidentally bite down on a rock or something. So you always have to rinse out your lentils. Okay, here we have our one cup of lentils rinsed and drained. We're gonna add that on top of everything and give this a little shake. Now we're gonna add our liquids. So, I mentioned that we'll be using broth. This is one quart of vegetable broth. One quart is four cups. So we're gonna use this entire thing, four cups of broth. And what's gonna happen while this is cooking is the lentils are going to expand and the mushrooms are going to cook down. This is four cups. I'm gonna add two more cups of water to that. 
one cup of water and two cups of water. Now your tray is starting to look pretty full. And the last thing we're gonna add are our spices. So we'll start with half a teaspoon of our sage. The next thing we're gonna add is thyme. So you want to add uh, about three quarters up to a full te teaspoon of thyme. I love thyme, so I think thyme and lentils and mushrooms just works well together. If you have fresh thyme, you can use that. Or if you have frozen thyme, you can use that as well. So this is something that I learned, but usually when you go to the grocery store and you buy like a bushel of thyme or mint or whatever, you only actually need a little bit for the recipe that you're making and the rest kind of goes to waste. But I discovered that if you freeze it, then you can use it at a later time and it's almost as good as fresh. So I'm gonna use some of my frozen thyme here, the equivalent of one teaspoon. So I'm just gonna use it like I would fresh thyme and kind of peel the leaves off. You can even add, you know, the whole thing in with the branches if you want, but I find taking the leaves off works a little bit better for disseminating flavor. So we added our thyme, now we're gonna add our salt. I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Everybody knows how much salt they like. If, you, if your broth that you use is really salty, you might want a little bit less, uh, but if your broth is not salty or low sodium and you're okay with a bit of salt, then I recommend about one teaspoon of salt. Now that all of our ingredients are added, this will need about two, maybe even three hours of cook time in full sun. So let's take it outside. Okay, so we are putting our very full tray with lentil mushroom stew into our solar oven. And we're gonna set it up so that the reflectors face the sun and our dots are aligned properly to make sure that it's getting the maximum amount of sun possible so it can heat this tube up and cook our food. And it is gonna take about two to three hours. So I'm gonna check on this every hour or so to make sure that the reflectors are properly aligned. This lentil mushroom soup was complete and I served it in a nice bowl here. It smells amazing. If you like mushrooms or lentils, or both of them, this dish is definitely for you. Once you serve it, you can garnish it with a little bit of that chopped green onion. Maybe add a little bit more salt pepper to your taste. By the way, these are nasturtium flowers that I've grown in my garden. They have like a nice peppery flavor to them. You can also garnish with one of these. I just wanted to take a quick moment to show you my nasturtium plant. This plant is edible. The leaves are edible and the flowers are edible. And the flowers are so pretty. I just think they add a certain pizzazz and a really bright, peppery, almost mustardy kind of flavor to any dish that you add them to. And I thought they would be perfect for our lentil mushroom stew. Bon appetit, my friends. Enjoy.